Columbus Geegan Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly, and today I'm down at the County Treasurer's Office. You know Tony Malazziotis, who is back on the among the living list. You had kind of a health scare. I uh, did. This August and uh, September, I had double surgeries. The uh, first one being an open heart. So yeah, well, yes. glad you're still here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm glad too. Yeah, good health, feeling good. Very good. Thank yeah, you. and uh, Jennifer Matthews is here as well. She is a property tax specialist here. And the reason I got these two together today is uh, a, Monday, a couple Mondays ago, I was in a meeting, and Tony brought up the fact that foreclosures are coming up on people that are behind on their taxes. Now, I got a personal story to tie into this. A couple of years ago, I was uh, trying to find my way in uh, a new direction for jobs and employment and all that kind of stuff, and I ended up having to use the Keeping Housing Affordable Act to keep my house. It wasn't the most uh, pride-filled moment of my life, but it was a program that was offered and a way to refinance what I had to kind of, you know, make what I was making at the time so I could keep my house. You know, I didn't want to lose my house. And I got to tell you, it was, it was honestly one of the scariest things that I've ever been a part of, to think that my current situation, you know, knowing that I could improve it and knowing that I could change things, it was, it was one of the scariest things that I'd ever been a part of to think that my house was going to get taken away. And when you brought this up at the meeting the other night and you said that you wanted to get the word out about people to, to, that they've got time to make things right and, and keep this from happening to them, I thought, there's my story. And that's why I got to come down and talk to you guys and, and get the word out about what does it take to keep that from happening. Because I, I, you know, it's, it's a scary thing to think about, but to have to live through it would be even worse. Yeah, and, I, and I can't imagine, it's, it's, like, it's not like you guys sit here day in and day out going, no, oh, we can't wait to repossess no, a house. No, we, it, we try to get the word out as much as we can. Sure. A person like you coming here, we hope that it's going to help uh, some people. We can't help everybody, but we, as, as long as we can save a few extra people from eviction and and uh, taking the families without having a roof over their head. And that's what, that's the, government a job, that's what a government job should do, protect exactly. people. All exactly. right, let's talk a little bit about it. Jennifer, first right. and foremost, let's say somebody's behind. This is, then this all has to do with 2015 taxes. Currently, yes. Okay. People with 2015 or prior taxes are in jeopardy of foreclosure. Right now, um, my estimate is about 1,600 people. Well, 1,600 properties that can include the vacant land next to your house or some oddball lots in the middle of Lakewood Club. Uh, people that live in other countries that may have bought property uh, like through an auction or off from eBay. Sure. So there's 1,600 properties in jeopardy. That's not necessarily 1,600 homes. I anticipate that we will actually foreclose on between 200, 250. Okay. Again, not all homes. Right. But our goal as the county treasurer's office is not to take somebody's home, but we're following the law in that property taxes were assessed, they're due, they're payable, and if you don't pay them for two and a half years, then we foreclose and it gets sold at a public auction. The county treasurer does not get rich on the public <coughs> auction by any means, right. and it costs everybody money. It costs the local municipality money, it costs the schools money, it costs the state money. You know, it, a tax bill isn't just one entity right. reflect for everybody so this week um it started tuesday and it goes through friday we do show cause hearings where people come in we meet with them we discuss how much they owe we try and figure out if they can have it paid this year the deadline to have them paid is april 2nd okay um and you know i might have somebody that comes in and says i don't get paid until the third if they're on social security or they're elderly, you know, when their checks come once a month. We try and find a way to work with these people to make it affordable for them to be able to stay in their house, but we have no authority under the law to erase what's due. Sure. We have to get our money back, that's the law. So people come in, they meet with me, we set up payment plans, but payment plans are really hard because I found I don't we've been doing this for probably eight or nine years this way and I've I found that payment plans don't typically work really well people make payments for a few months and then I don't see them again for a whole year well I, but you know and, and and I get it and that and I understand mm -hmm. but I mean when when it comes down to a payment plan people don't always often have 
that extra payment every month. They don't, you know, you know and what I, I mean? try so, to work with people. But, but what Jennifer does, because she talks to most of those people a lot sure. more than I do, uh, what <coughs> she does is she tries to set up the payment plan, not just on what all, and try to get them to catch up within the next 12 months, but also on the type of income that they have. Sure. So we try to make that payment that's affordable to them. Might not be very easy sometimes nope. because people are, uh, you know, they might be on heavy medications because they're, they're sick or whatever. So she's trying to figure out the best way for them to be successful. Yep. So they can be proud of themselves that they succeeded, they saved their property. Um, she did use the, the word our money back, but actually what she means by that is that a lot of people might not know is that when somebody doesn't pay their taxes for whatever reason, the state law says that the county treasurer must pay it yeah. for them. That's the reason we have to go and try to recoup what we put out. Right. That's what she meant by our money because we put out about $12, $12 million a year. Really? And yes. uh, uh, that money is on, uh, we have to borrow it for 18 months. Yep. It's payable on three payments, including interest of every six months for the 18 months. So it, time has, in essence, a lot to do with it too. So deadlines are there in purpose. The tax law changed in 1999 with Public Act 123. Before, it used to be five, sometimes up to seven years to catch up on your back taxes. Now it's a little bit over a two-year uh, system. Um, part of it is because a lot of stuff, when DNR was in charge of it and, you know, things went and people moved and nothing was put on books and it was a mess all over the place. Yeah. Uh, now it's a, it's it might not be good for the consumer out there because they have less time to catch up on these things, but it has put things back in perspective. Sure. Um, and uh, once a public act went into effect, the state gave the right to any county treasurer to become what they call an opt-in county. Okay. Opt-in county means that you're taking over the foreclosed process from the state and DNR and you do it within your county. It keeps it at a local level rather local. than trying to deal with Lansing. Sure. They can deal with us, which makes a big difference for for anybody, I mean, anything that you would have to go to Lansing for previously, now you can just come here and we're... Try to go to the system in Lansing to figure out why they shouldn't take your house or give you an extension and everything else was <clears> impossible. <throat> yeah. Most of the times you never got a call back. Now they have come to our office and we have put all these programs into place that it's been a lot better and, and it works out 100% better. And, so. it, and it's a lot easier for our local people to, to yes. find those answers and to mm -hmm. find ways to make this work instead of, you know, like you said, the red tape, just the red tape alone right. in Lansing is, is enough to drive anybody right. nuts and just, oh, hell with it. So when I came, <laughs> when I came into <laughs> office on January 1st of uh, 2005, it's the first thing that I did is I became an opt-in county. Yep. So we took off the responsibility of uh, uh, doing all the stuff that the state was doing before. Some of them were very behind themselves prior to that on notices because the law says there's certain things that have to happen sure. before you can foreclose. Uh, a lot of the stuff went ended up going to courts because people fought it, you know, so they can't lose the property. So number one is what Jennifer and other people in the office do is to make sure that the process is done correctly. Yep. And we have a company out of Kalamazoo, Michigan uh, called Tyler Tech that does the, the serving, the processing and everything for us. Uh, they do pretty close to 60 some counties in the state of Michigan. They're very good in what they're doing and we have a very good relationship. Um, the fellow's name is Murray uh, Spalding and if you talk to Murray, the first thing he's gonna tell you is the Muskegon County has been so far ahead of helping people good. to keep their houses in any other county in the state of Michigan. That's a good thing. Because yes. we want to, I mean, that's, it, we want to protect our people. Yes, Go our goal yeah. is not to take somebody's house. We have to follow state law, but we don't really want to take somebody's house. The only issue that we run into is I can't want you to keep your house more than you want to keep your house. Right. So I try, you know, we work with people, we set up payment plans. Sometimes we notice that this person isn't claiming an exemption that they're entitled to. So we tell them, okay, go sign this paper and it, it'll lower your taxes and you might get some money back. Sure. Um, sometimes we direct people to poverty exemptions. A lot of taxpayers don't necessarily know the benefits that are available to them. If somebody is in extreme poverty, 
they can apply to have their taxes reduced and or eliminated each year. Um, there's a veterans exemption for disabled veterans that they're eligible to apply for. A lot of people don't know these things. They sure. come in, they see us because they're getting a lot of nasty letters in the mail. And like right now, I'm, I'm thinking probably at least one letter a week is, is being mailed to them saying, you need to do something because you're going to lose your house. And it's intimidating. It, it can and be. And it's scary. Because yeah. it, the average scary. guy on the street doesn't know that mm -hmm. these, these paths are there for them to take. You know, and, and sometimes first-time homeowners don't necessarily understand the tax process. Right. And a lot of people don't know that we accept partial payments. So they're, if their tax bill is $1,200, they're like, I can't seem to save $1,200. I might have $600 saved up. And then my car breaks down because those things happen. Yeah. You know, so we tell them, we put that on our notices. You can make partial payments. You need to come in and talk to us. The sooner we see somebody, the better. Um, and back in 2013, the state started a program. It's called Step Forward Michigan. Okay. It is federally funded. It's run through the state of Michigan. They have a lot of money and they've helped a lot of people. They can help with mortgage foreclosures and or property taxes. There's not... You can't make new, too much money for this program. Right. So it, that's the bonus. Um, that actually takes Taking a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it, it's a fantastic program. To qualify for that, it has to be your primary residence. Sure. You have to be current on your mortgage. They will help with either taxes or a mortgage. Yep. Um, they don't help anybody that has a land contract, which right. is, it, that kind of hurts sometimes but it's a tax free interest free loan that after five years it's wiped off yeah so that's i, I want to say it's helped well over 100 people since in our county alone other homeowners this is yeah. this is where you find the answers though this, this is what yes. we have looked for we have it's, you know it, what's available we we'll let the people know and i, uh, and I, and I guess the, the thing that, that brings me down here today is is that this, this is government working for you. This is not you needing to be afraid of the government because they, they, they don't want your house, okay? <laughs> nice as no. it might be, and, it, and all that, oh, they, Andy, that's not the goal. Andy, I mean, uh, take anybody. When they go to the county treasurer's office to pay delinquent taxes, they're not very happy. No. <laughs> You're giving your good earned money out, yeah. money that you might not have available all the time. Our goal here is that we find ways, uh, if you live happy or at least feeling good yeah. if you have a smile on your face well, we have done our jobs yeah. and that's what we're looking at uh, there's other programs too like DHS has a program for example uh, if you are a DHS uh, um, client. client and you go there they need to go and talk to their caseworker they have a two thousand dollar lifetime that they can help you with your taxes when you're about ready to lose it wow. for example if they're behind for the 2015 for $2,100, and they get qualified by DHS, DHS is going to pay the 2000 after they pay the balance of 100 of themselves. Yep. They will pay up to 2000 2000 They may deem that you're only eligible for 1500 and you have to pay the first 600 and then they will come in. It's not a guaranteed 2000 Sure. but it's called state emergency relief, and a lot of people that may have a caseworker or may not you can go down and file for it you know all you need is some sort of paperwork saying your house is in jeopardy of foreclosure which any one of the bazillion nasty grams for title check will typically work yeah they do it <laughs> um i know the vets administration on occasion has helped veterans sure. pay their taxes we've had individuals we had churches sometimes if you're a member of a church a church will come in and pay your taxes um we're always workable with a payment plan some people don't know that if if their house is paid for maybe they can go to their bank and get like a home equity line sure which doesn't sound like a perfect solution but their interest rate is lower than our interest rate and yeah. our rates are set by the state it's not you know so you might get a better interest rate um the answers are there the answers are there mm -hmm. but you have to come here and we can go over it a first step well, she said something about PRE, personal residence exemption earlier. Yep. Uh, there's certain municipalities, for whatever the reason, one in particular that they have really have, I'm not mentioning any names. <laughs> She's wanting uh, them under the table. <laughs> uh, but they were notorious about not informing and putting the word out that if you live in your property and that's the only house you have, you're entitled 
what the personal resident exemption is excuses the 18 meals that uh, you pay for the uh, school operating taxes. Okay, all right. So once we find out that they have qualified for that, we put them through the process and they can go back three years to reinstate that personal residence exemption. Then we take that money, instead of refunding them a check for an X amount of dollars, and we'll put it towards their back taxes. Ah. So it doesn't have to come out of their pockets. See? So that's another thing that we have come up with. Uh, recently, then we're working on this right now. It's not exactly in place. Hopefully, we'll be able to use it this year. Is uh, uh, the millage for senior uh, Res uh, yep. resources. Yep, yep. It's, uh, it has uh, money available. And, uh, and we inquire on that, that is, can we use their services sure. for something like this? And sure. the answer was yes. Good. So we have to identify the people that are in the need, that are over the age of 60, you know, it's that their home. their home and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to help some more through that process. So uh, as much as maybe the, the thought is uh, treasurer's office is evil, county treasurer's office is evil, uh, we're really working for them. We're yeah. working, we know, the uh, last thing we want to do is uh, to take anybody's property. Right. It does not help us. Right. Uh, bottom line is that the county itself is going to be made whole at some point, either by the sale or by the payments or the action, of course, the sale or the chargebacks. Because if we don't collect what we pay out on this $12 million, we have to charge it back to the local units which means that now they have less money to operate for the police, for the fire department, and everything else. And again, it's a state law. We follow the rules that the legislators on has put in place yep. to the T. But what we do here in Muskegon County, at least, with a little compensation for the people. And um, it has worked. I believe it has worked for us. Step one. I get, I get a letter in the mail, I'm, uh-oh, what now? Step one, you need to come in here and talk to us. If okay. you ignore it or wait until the very last day, it makes us, it, it's hard for us to help at that point. Okay. You need to come in as soon as possible when you get a letter about pending foreclosure. Come in, we can discuss what your options are, and it's a whole lot easier to set up a payment plan when you have 15 months to make payments and not three. Right. You know, it, it's going to make a big difference in how much you're paying, and... Even if you don't want to come in and you want to set up your own payment plan, and it, it's a good idea to call, figure out how much you should be paying to catch you up. Sure. And it's a whole lot easier for me to say, wow, you only need about three extra months to give them that time if I can see that they've been trying all along. Yeah. I have to see effort um, because, again, I can't want it more than you. You have to want it. You have to work for it. Yeah. People sometimes... They, they get the notices and so forth. The thing, if they ignore it, it might go away. It will not go away. No. And the other thing they don't realize is that the longer you wait to come and see us and try to figure something out, the fees, the, the interest and the penalties, there's a huge penalty that kicks in after the first year because your first year you're in delinquency, the second year you're in forfeiture. And that's when a big state penalty kicks in and it's an amount... But it's two hundred and forty dollars, but then the interest rate. If you go one full year, your interest rate at that point is sixteen percent, mm. and it it goes up to eighteen percent. Mm. So and they don't realize that, and big. all of a sudden, it might be after three years when we're ready to foreclose if we find no solution. They owe as much or more for penalties and interest than the actual yeah. uh, money yeah. that they owe to begin with. So and the sooner the so they know, everybody knows that they haven't paid their taxes. Sometimes we get people say, well, I did not know. Well, <laughs> you know, you live in this country, you should know, you yeah, know. Right. Uh, but the sooner they come to see us, before they even get to that foreclosing year, it's better for them. Yes. Take action. Yes. So, and she'll smile at you. She really will. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> she and I both just about had the same dental surgery, so we're both kind of just trying to claw our way through this one. You guys are awesome. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes today to explain this thing. Uh, and you know, when, when you mentioned that in the meeting the other night, the, the bell went off and it's like, you know what, I've been through that. And I know how scary it is to, to, to face that kind of an emergency. And if we can get the word out some way, shape or form, that it doesn't need to be that scary, it doesn't need to be that intimidating, and that, that this, is, this is your government working for you. They don't want your house, they don't want your property, they want to find a way for you to make it right, and they are on your side. So we're going to link up your office here on the Muskegon Channel. They can find you, and they can get down here and, 
and make things right. It's uh, it's a pleasure, Tony. I'm glad you're uh, doing uh, well. We'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to get the word out we more, do. and, and uh, we appreciate the work that you do also. So, doing what I can, man. Uh, I think you're no different than we are. We're all public servants. That's and, it. Uh, yeah. Uh, the sooner that people come to us for whatever their reason is, you know, maybe we'll find get the right fixed. solutions for it. Absolutely. Jennifer, a pleasure to meet you. Yes, sir. All the details are right here on the Muskegon Channel. Thanks again, guys. Thank you.